Mike Poulin from Hudson, New Hampshire, and Tim Lipke from Londonderry, New Hampshire, take on the challenge of Joe Tavernis from Lynn and Tom Senemy from Lynn. This is Candlepin Doubles. Good afternoon to you. I'm Ed Harding. Thank you for joining us. It's March. The Red Sox will begin spring training on their way to the World Series. Bunch of skeptics here. Great way to get our late winter, early spring underway here on Candlepin Doubles. Let me just review the scoring for you. The team that wins today will take 500 bucks home with them. The team that doesn't win will take $300. You get money for consecutive marks, $50 if you get three of them. And you get money for consecutive strikes. Lots of money if you can drop them down consecutively. So we'll be developing that as the game goes on. What I want to do is I want to share some letters with you because we have a new player in Candlepin Doubles today. We've gotten three letters. Lovely people, Ruth King in Norwood, and two people whose name, honestly, I cannot read. One from New Bedford and one from Providence, Rhode Island. The sentiment is this. Ed, please have your scorekeeper on Candlepin doubles make their sevens the conventional way, not the unconventional way. Kifo, show us a seven. This is an unconventional seven. Now, two things you should know about Kifo. One, he's trying to make sure that the seven distinguishes itself from a two, and the other is he's a Laker fan. So... <laughs> What would you expect? But the new player this week is a computer. Al's behind the keyboards of the computer, and we have moved into the, what, 80s, Al, or what, 90s now? So we'll have computerized scoring for you on doubles. So that's our new starter. The bowlers have done it before. It's their show. Gentlemen, go to it. Mike Poulin leaves the four horsemen left side. Get over the cry, but it doesn't get over. Looks at the four horsemen. Left side gets it all but the seven. Mike Poulin misses. But Joe Tavernese picks up the 10. So Poulin and Tavernese have gotten us going. Mike Poulin. Joe Tavernese with an average of 125. High single of 207. This is Mike Poulin with a high single of 199 and a high triple of 477 with an average of 130. Joe Tavernese average is 125. He's looking at the seven and a chance to mark. Got it! So Joe Tavernese has drawn first blood here. Mike goes strong on the pin, isn't able to wipe out the 10 with it, so he posts his second consecutive nine. We got a nice look at our new look, new computer look. Wonderful way, A, to keep track of the score, and B, if you look at the right-hand column of the computer, you'll know exactly the pin differential between the two teams. A little bit to the right of the head pin. Joe Tavernese brings his slightly left. Four horsemen right, and the eight will stay for him. Good try. I thought the 10 was going to go, but it didn't. Right on. Two. Three will earn him $50 in bonus money. Mike Poulin has elevated it by a pin in the third frame. He takes all 10. Tabernese and Senemi have a seven pin lead through boxes already scored. response from Joe Tavernis. Four horsemen left side stay. He can mark again, which would give him three consecutive, which would give him bonus money, but all of that falls for not. Joe
Bill Tabernis knocks all but one down here, the fourth. But Mike Poulin, who has won two stops in the WCBC Pro Tour, a single stop, but a mixed doubles with Carol Downey, is working on the first of two bonus balls with a strike. The lefty delivers. Little strong. And they're all falling. They're all falling on lane four. He's gone from the four horsemen to a couple of lonely soldiers. You see Joe Tavernese, too, has a makeable mark in the frame as well. He's got the four horsemen right plus the nine, so he should have a good shot at his. Yeah! Michael cleans out his. The ten will stay. Joe Tavernese will not get it. Tavernese does not get it either, so in the fifth box, he posts his second consecutive nine. And Mike Poulin has come back with a couple of marks in a row. So we've boxed, we've bowled the first five boxes of the first string, and Poulin, Lipke, Tavernese, and Senemi really setting up for a great finish. Please stay with us. We'll complete it here on Candlepin Double. Take us through the remainder of the first string. Watching Tim Lipke, who has the Robert Parrish arm restraint on. Get over! Tom Senemi. First ball. Tim is from London, Terry, with a high single of 200, high triple of 515, and an average of 132. Tom's high single is 211, a high triple of 469, an average of 131, and he marks. So in each of their first boxes, Tim Lipke with a nine. Tom Senemi marks, so he too with a bonus ball. Our champions Poulin and Lipke through, as you see on the right, through boxes already scored, have a six pin advantage. But remember, Senemi has a bonus ball. Look good, strong in a head pin, maybe too strong. Better part of a spread eagle. Very nice on the head pin. He fills with an eight and has given his team a three-pin advantage. Tom lost the 1988 state doubles championship by one pin to Doug Smith and Craig Holbrook. Tom was bowling with Joe. You're going to get him the nice way, and you're going to get him the easy way. That was both Mark's second consecutive frame. Tom Senemi has stepped up here in his first two boxes, giving his team the lead. A lead that is three pins. See, the minus three refers to the champion's position. So the champions are down three pins. Spare lead. Makeable shot. Tom Senemi, strong. Brought it right, kept it right, and looks at the spread fortune of the spread eagle. That's what he wanted to do the last time, one ball too late. This is how you make up pin differential, extra ball. You believe it? I thought they were coming all the way through the back door and knock over the head pin from the back side, but it didn't. He marks in the frame. So three out of the four boxes that Tom Senemi has bowled, he has marked in them, but how marvelous was Tim Lipke's ball. His team down by 11 pins, and in one fell swoop, he brought him to within one. First of two bonus balls. 
Slides through, taps the seven, doesn't. The four horsemen left side stay. It's gone. Spare lead. Brought it a little too much right. It stayed flat on him. Stays one pin back. Three boxes scored. A second consecutive mark for Tom Senemy. So here in the 10th, he will have a bonus ball. Tim Lipke comes out with a nine here in the 10th box, and his team of Poulin and Lipke have completed a, the first string at 128. Senemy and Tavernese are already at 130, and they have a bonus ball. There it is. So whatever this is, is what it will be. It will be seven more. It'll be a 137. Tavernese and Senemy, 137. Pool and Lipke at 128. We still have a string of bowling to go to decide who wins this afternoon. Great match. Stay with us. Boxes. We have 10 more boxes to go. Pool and Lipke, Tavernese and Senemy. Joe Tavernese has gotten us going here. First ball, second string. Mike Poulin leaves the spread eagle, drives it right through the head pin. Follow the bouncing ball all the way to the mark. Right through the gap. Right, that was a tweener route. <laughs> right tween the space. <laughs> I can do with that, really. And Joe Tavernese is working on a mark, trying to fill, fill with five. Mike Pullen, again, square on the head pin and virtually the same result. I'll tell you, he had wood to work with. And Almost helped him all the way. Disappointing start for the Poole and Lipke team here in the second string. It's Joe Tavernese puts a 10 up here in the second box. Mike Poolin puts up a nine. So already through the box is already scored and bold in this match. Champions of Poole and Lipke are down by 18 pins. Again, the minus 18 number on the right of the screen refers to how far down the champions are. They are 18 pins down. Straight on, the seven is wavering, but it's anchored. tell you too it's a good thing we're using the computer because Kipo's still making the sevens with the slashes in them <laughs> see the nice clean computer we got <laughs> poor Kipo never live this down four horsemen left side plus the what's that back there the eight forest in front of him, but he didn't knock them all down. Fills it with a seven. I'll tell you, for the second straight frame, <clears throat> excuse me, second straight frame, he almost had a remarkable mark in terms of ball movement, in terms of pin activity. Didn't get it. He will try to go get the seven and max out with a 10 in the box. Last box for these two bowlers here in the second string. Tavernese wants to go out with a bang. Came within two pins of it. Seven pins the difference? What is it? Nine. Nine pins the difference. He's 
fish in the head pin, but little else. Joe Tabernese will leave his teammate a mark to fill, a bonus ball to start with. Mike Poulin would like the same. Five stand, and there's wood there. And he didn't want to go as right as he did. Went in there good, but they all didn't go. So it's an eight in the fifth box for Mike Poulin, and he's done. He has sat down. So it's Joe Taverny. It's time for Tom Senemy and Tim Lickey to take us to the end. Two boxes already completed and scoring a nine pin differential. Poulin and Lipke, the champions, down by those nine pins. You keep filling marks with eights and leave yourself with another mark, it's going to be difficult over the remaining frames. Unless you do that yourself. Each man can mark. It's not. Isn't that strange? Both men with spare leaves and neither one got it. Both men with a chance at a 10. That was a tough shot for Tom. He's wood in front. Now, oddly enough, both men with a chance to get a 10 and neither one got it. We have four frames of bowling to go. Champions Poole and Lipke down by 19 pins. A hole they can climb out of, but they best start a grabbing the sides. Ah, cannonball! Well, that's how I grab the sides and start moving out. Tom Senemy will again leave the frame open. And now the tension beginning to mount just a bit. Tom Senemy is bowling in the eighth box. His first two boxes here in the second string have been open. My mark out on this one, that's a spare lead. This is the first of two bonus balls for Tim Lipke. Working on a strike. Won't double. Tough lead. Tom Sadamy gets his mark. An important ball in this match right here. Fills the strike with seven pins. Puts up a disappointing eight in the eighth box. And remember, this is a bonus ball. Tom Senemy, the bonus yields him six. Staying right on the edge. Oh, well, tough ball. Straight on, drives it through. Two consecutive marks, and that's just about dug the hole. The box has already scored. It's 19 pins difference. Tim just threw it right through the space. Hit the hole. He threw that in a Major League Baseball game and struck out the side. In this game, he gets Bupkis. Disappointing sixth here in the ninth box. One left. I would say, not to put too many carts before too many horses, the Tavernese and Senemy will find their way on the next week's show. A third consecutive mark for... 
Tavernese Senemi team, which means bonus money, but more importantly, they have secured the match and they've secured the, <clears throat> pardon me, right to come back next week. Oh, I tell you, a lot of activity and almost took out the seven and the 10, but the seven and the 10 stay there, lonely soldiers. You see them at the end of the alley. is complete. Poland and Lipke, our champions, have been beaten by Tavernis and Senemi. We'll talk to the combatants when we come back here on a Candleton Double. So we will hope to see you in just a minute. $300 softens uh, the blow a little bit, maybe, huh? Yeah, we got beat by a better team. They blow well. 40-pin differential. Uh, was that almost a knockout, maybe, huh? Not two marks. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. We really enjoyed Thanks watching. Thanks. Great match, like guys. Thank, Thank you. you. I tell you what, I, first of all, tell me who these lovely young people are. Okay, this is my nephew, Brendan. Hi, Brendan. You like the turtles? Brandon. Not Brandon? Brandon. Brandon, whatever. How oh, you like the turtles? <laughs> yeah. Who's your yeah. favorite turtle? Raphael. Raphael, the one yeah. with the side. And, and who's this? It's my granddaughter, April Lynn Ross. Hi, April. How are you? Do you like the turtles, too? Did Grampy bowl well? Yeah. Yes, Grampy bowl very well, and so did his partner. So you guys get 550 bucks. Thank nice you. job. Thank you. It's a good job, really. The one is the first one. Yeah, pardon? The top one is the, the first one. one. They got the first one under their belt, so thank you. 